Hey, thank you very much for joining us. My name is Nathan. I've got Brian Chavis here from the Landlord Academy and brianchavis.com. And uh, today we are going to talk about wholesaling apartment buildings. And so for many real estate investors, especially wholesalers, they tend to stick to this kind of typical bread and butter, single family home flipping. However, you know, multifamily properties can actually be very profitable. And so Brian, I'd love for you to um, take us through some of the things that you're working on and uh, share with us um, you know, a little bit more about apartment wholesaling and why you decided to get into this. Yeah, thanks, Nathan. Uh, always good to, 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 to be live and share content with you. Um, excited about what we're doing here. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you can remember, Nathan. Um, I know you can remember the countless amount of lectures we, we gave uh, throughout the state uh, when we were offering uh, continuing education credits for, uh, for uh, Miami Association of Realtors, and et cetera. Yeah. Um, how many people would just come with distressed deals and want me to kind of analyze them and give them, you know, whatever, step-by-step -step keys to, um, you know, to, to uh, stabilize the property? You know, I just never, it never dawned on me until recently, you know, uh, you know speaking with, Joe Ebanks, the cash man, uh, you know, who's a, um, you know, master wholesaler, um, you know, gentleman who wholesales at a single family homes at a very high level. Uh, did I really kind of get introduced to this, 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 this operation and, 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 and I basically try to grasp and get my head around what they were doing. As soon as I seen what it was they were doing, the light bulb went off, you know, like, wow, how many deals could we have wholesaled? I mean, remember that hedge fund that I did, you know, right. that I filmed. You know, it was like, you know, they even offered me, you know, 800000 for the property. And I knew it was worth a little bit over $1.5. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm, my, my, I'm just, I just got, got to thinking like, my God, how much, how many, how many millions did I leave on the table? And I quickly stopped after one or two projects because it was making me sick um, because of the amount of money that I've left on the table. So I'm like, okay, so what is different from wholesaling multifamily apartment buildings than single family? What are the challenges? So, you know, of course there, there's, there, there are different challenges in, 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 in which I love and I, and, and, and they're, they're pretty, um, you know, they're pretty, um, in your face as far as the challenge, you know, they're, they, I can see why people don't do this at a, at a, at a high level right. because, you know, it does take a certain skill set. Um, but however, these are skill sets that I already possess. You know, I already have a database of sellers. I already have a database database of uh, motivated buyers because, you know, as well as I'm a syndicator myself now. So, you know, at the end of the day, I've already been creating these lead generation lists and tools. Um, you know, so I quickly realized that, you know, one of the areas I probably would step up my lead generation in is, you know, the ability to find motivated sellers a little bit okay. more than just conventionally going through brokers um commercial brokers so you know i had to dig deep but when i started digging and researching and trying to figure out i figured out a way to really you know this this business is easily um you can fold this into the existing business that i already have whether it be a property management business that you already have whether you're an, a, a syndicator uh you know this this ability to wholesale is something that you can just kind of add as a right as a, uh, you know what I mean, as an add-on to you, an auxiliary add-on to what you're currently already um, um, operating as a, um, you know, as, a, as an owner or an entrepreneur with the business model that you already currently have. So it's not going to cost you a lot of money. You know, you probably have most, if not all the systems already currently in place if you've already done one or two deals. So, you know, I had to look at it from that perspective. I also had to look at it from the perspective of if you do not have any deals and you haven't done deals and you're starting from the bottom, you know, how would you go about doing this? So, um, which does not make it impossible, um, you know, but you just have to be a little bit more creative. So that's how I came up with, you know, developing a, a wholesale uh, course um, training. And it really started with training myself and right. then led to, um, you know, led to me uh, creating the ability to uh, um, uh, be able to put pen to paper and kind of build out a framework to, to teach others how to do this. Because really the key is what I've been teaching the keys are, you know, all the, the vocabulary, the fundamental understanding of property management to be able to, to work through a deal um, for a seller, a motivated seller to be able to touch their pain points, perhaps, you know, figure out maybe is there an option for seller financing? Is there an option to wholesale? Is there an option to manage the property for the individual to stabilize it and then look at options to be the individual's confidant to 
maybe shop the deal. You know, there's right. tons of different avenues, but none of those avenues are really workable for anyone if you don't have the basic fundamentals, um, property management, commercial, multifamily, or apartment uh, uh, evaluation, underwriting background. So, you know, that is why I decided to build out this framework and kind of walk individuals through, you know, what it takes to, uh, to build this, this, this model or to add this to your current existing um, right. successful model. So with that being said, I'll kind of show you a few slides. Like we're not okay. going to do everything, but I'll show you the, the, the first few slides on the, uh, the over 10,000 square foot overview of, uh, of the framework. And when I say framework, I know a lot of people talk systems, but systems is kind of more like what you do day to day. The framework kind of tells you and identifies like, you know, the main core pieces, okay. uh, uh, you know, that, you know, almost like the blueprint. You know what I mean? The the actual materials and labor and, and all that, that, that comes later, but you have to have the blueprint. The framework is the blueprint of the business. So it's just going to tell you this is what you need and this is how you go about building it. And then telling you where you can pick up the materials just like any kind of blueprint does and man hours associated with that and the type of, you know, you know um, uh, skilled laborers you're going to need. All that is usually in the blueprint. And this is the same with the, with the framework. So my framework usually always consists of a senior framework and a junior framework. So we're going to, you know, talk junior or senior to junior. Step one, uh, lead generation. You know, this lead generation is key. So the, the thing that I found that makes this business different, you know, and for me, because I'm not a salesperson, right. so I have to disclose that, you know, what, what made this kind of, I had to really step back and think and throw darts at the wall a little bit was, okay, how do you sell? You know, how do you, how do you get the motivated sellers? How do you get the motivated buyers? You know, you also have to be working both ends typically simultaneously. So, you know, you have to have the right type of framework. And it really came down from what, to what I found was understanding that, you know, you have to have the, uh, in these bullet points, you have to have relationships with commercial brokers, you need to have a direct mail campaign. You need to have a social media presence. Um, and then, of course, the tools to be able to um, uh, maintain your lead generation tools for your follow-ups and to get information out there. You know, what tools are out there? I like Reonomy and Prospect Now to be able to really go after. And I'm, right now, I'm talking about lead generation more so for um, possible uh, sellers. Right. So, um, but on both ends, Sellers and buyers, you're going to have to have commercial broker relationships, direct mail campaigns that go out that, that you know, if you can speak okay. to both. And I have some unique uh, um, templates that speak to both buyers and sellers at the same time that if you pick up this mail piece, you're going to, if you're a seller that's, you feel like you're in distress and you can't quite get the, get the gear out of, out of stabilization, you know, uh, out of, uh, you know, op, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, out of high delinquencies, high vacancies, you can't get that gear into stabilization, and you're you're frustrated uh, with the property. You know, you might look at this marketing material, and it may speak to you. But if you're a buyer, you might look at this marketing material and and think something totally different. Like, hey, wow, you know, this is a great place to go, or a source to go, or a guy to know, or a company to know to be able to possibly find uh, find deals that are undervalued that are out there. So you know, um, being creative with the marketing piece is extremely important. And then that kind of also, Nathan, as well, as you know this, and this is your area of expertise more than it is mine, um, how does the brand carry over into social media? Right. Because you have to be speaking the same thing, both in your direct mail pieces as well as your social media pieces. Uh, you need to be saying the same things. You need to be delivering high-quality content and, and, and uh, both in the direct mail and the social media world. So, you know, now you're, you're, you're marrying the two. And uh, it's extremely important. So, you know, I, 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 spent, um, I spent a couple of weeks on developing the right type of templates that speak to both buyers and sellers, uh, their potential pain points. And, uh, and obviously, I knew them very well because I'm both buyer. I've both been both buyer and seller. So I know. And I've, and I've had properties, you know, as you well know, that I've, I've made a living stabilizing properties. So I've, 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 I've seen the worst of the worst. There's countless YouTube videos with me going through some of the worst of the worst that there is out there. So at the end of the day, I know all the pain points. You know, it's uh, it wasn't it wasn't hard for me to develop um, content and uh, templates for individuals to uh, to 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 um, you know uh, gravitate towards um, both you know people that would interact with our course 
and both buyers and sellers. You know, this is something I think I, I know will will work because obviously I work it and, and, and right. I'm a practitioner in the business. So, you know, that was that 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 took a little uh, you know a little time developing that, but really, you know, because I you know there's you know you have to learn the art of, you know, what to say, but do it in you know. <laughs> minimize it in, 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 in the, you know, the word count and, you know, you can't get too wordy with your of course. flyers and things of that nature. And, and, you know, and the type of, you know, cards you were sending out or, you know, the type of direct mail you're sending out, what colors to use, what bullet points to, you know, were most important um, that would speak to both buyer and seller. Uh, that took time to, to develop that content because, you know, that is a skill set, you know, um, that you have to kind of work, work on and figure out which one works and which ones don't. Um, so, you know, that was, that was important. Any, I don't, any questions there real quick as we, as we covered that, anything you want to add as a, you know, I know this is your area of expertise as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, when he's talking about social media and lead generation, I mean, you're kind of thinking about that Twitter effect. Um, you really only get so many characters to make an impression. Um, when you're sending out mailers, um, you're dealing with, you know, a card the size of a postcard. Yeah. You're really not going to be able to send a, a brochure full of information. Um, so you really have to scale it down to, you know, the nitty gritty, uh, you know, powerful wording, uh, get all the fluff out and get to the point. Um, so that's, that's what he's, you know, basically saying. So yeah, no, I agree 100%. And love, uh, all the fluff out. Get, I love that you, what you said there. Uh, get all the, we're just going, doing a yeah. quick little live. Uh, you said get all the fluff out and uh, get straight to the point. And, and yeah, and you know, and for me that was that was the that was the hard part. Nathan is uh, yeah. developing the developing these um, these scripts um, are not scripts. The first of all, the marketing material I haven't gotten to the scripts yet. But developing the uh, direct mail pieces and the social media to be able to uh, you know, because you you would think that you know, and 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 and, and you and if you think this, you would be right. But because I have a brand that's already out there, um, it, it was easier uh, for me. And that's true. You know, if you have the credibility of a brand that's already out in the marketplace right. of a person that is a, 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 an expert in property management or you're a syndicator or you're both like me. Um, yeah, you know, your credibility is out there. But if you need to build instant credibility, this is where I had to kind of sit and think about, you know, who are who are our uh, who our students were going to be, you know, when you're talking about apartment buildings, you know, this, you know, this is, this is something that, something else that I found out real quick is that it, it intimidates a lot of people. I was blessed and fortunate enough to come up in this industry, you know, uh, working in the, uh, in the multifamily industry, attending the apartment association, you know, um, being, uh, you know, schooled by you know uh, my local association and really understanding and, and, and taking a lot of the training and educational courses that they provided um i benefited from it so it wasn't scary to me right but i quickly see at the end of the day um you know why most wholesalers of single family homes and most people in general stay away from multifamily because the sheer numbers scare them and then when you create a business model like what we're talking about you know, this can be scary as well. And you know, how do you create marketing pieces? And you know, you're, you know, talking about multi-million dollar deals. Um, but you know, as you can see, it's not that scary when you have someone create the framework and you create the direct mail pieces for you and can kind of walk you through it. Uh, it makes it easier to be able to, and I th and I see, you know, also before we leave this section, this, you know, very important section of how to lead generate. Um, I found that, you know, the, uh, that, the skill sets that, that were missing in the marketplace and other courses uh, with other gurus that are out there talking about it were pieces that actually knew how to talk to both, not having two different uh, 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 sales pieces, one talking to sellers and one talking to buyers. How, you know, how can you combine both? And I, and I thought that, you know, for me, that's where I had to pause. And then I developed the piece. And then I had to, you know, as you said, shape it up and shave it a little bit and cut it back to be able to, to, to fit the content, the bullet points and hit them right between the eyes quickly. Um, so, you know, that took some skills that I don't possess because, you know, I love to, you know me, I, I can pack a flyer with, with content. So, you know, but at the end of the day, it was really important. And if you're already in this business as a property manager and you own a property management business, 
I mean, you already have a great lead generation tool. Now you just got to figure out how to farm it. You know, you, now you create your framework and, you, and, you're, and you're using these steps and these systems that we're talking about, Nate. And, you know, you, you, are, you quickly realize, well, wow, if I've been doing this for a while, if I work at Keller Williams or I work at Century 21 or Remax or EXP, the, the, you know, the new uh, big dog on the, on the block, um, wow, I really have a lot of this already built in. So Correct. now you're just, you're able to then focus on content. And if you don't have it already built in you, and, you, and you're starting fresh, you know, now you at least know, okay, well, I've got someone who developed the content that really knows this business and industry. I can adopt, you know, their philosophy and their, uh, their credibility because that's going to be huge when you're, when you're working on projects like this is being able to present uh, when you're working both ends with a seller and a buyer, you be, you have to be able to present credibility because most of these brokers, can get on the phone with you within the first five minutes, really quicker than that, they'll be able to sum you up whether or not you know what it is you're talking about because right. of your vocabulary. I think, you know, rich dad, poor dad, I remember starting out many years ago, you know, decades ago, you know, reading his books, it was all about vocabulary. And as a special ed student, you know, my background of not really having, you know, being strong, you know, coming through the public school system, you know, I can really attest to not having a, having the right type of vocabulary. You need a financial vocabulary to, to be able to compete and be competitive. You, you, you really have to um, have those skill sets, the ability to articulate and speak with investors as well as sellers. You have to have a certain type of vocabulary to be able to articulate. And I think that's why it's important to have backgrounds in property management, backgrounds in sales, um, backgrounds in, in um, uh, property underwriting, being able to analyze and evaluate deals because you're picking up skill sets that are going to be able to help you quickly uh, make decisions for both buyers and sellers when you're working these lead generation systems. And man, no one script, I'm, I'm developed some scripts for you, but to be honest with you, Nate, no one script is going to be one, one shoe fits all. Some yeah. of this, you're going to have to be able to think on your toes and be able to create a framework for someone possibly right on the phone. Oh, this is where your property is located. Oh, these are the issues you're having with high vacancies. Have you thought about implementing this type of system? Have you thought about doing this, you know, to, to control high delinquencies? Have you thought about reevaluating your qualifying criteria? When's the last time you evaluated your qualifying criteria? So on. So, if, you know, you got to be able to think like this on your, on your toes, you know, when you're talking with buyers and sellers and be able to, you know, quickly create these frameworks for them because they're like, wow, Correct. this guy knows what he's talking about. So now you've got them and you're building relationships. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you're sending out these mailers and you're getting these phone calls back and you're sending them through your, your, your funnel um, and you're filtering who's, who's real and who isn't, at the end of the day, Nate, you are, um, you're really essentially, you know, um, there's no loss, loss lead. There's somewhere to put that individual. If they don't buy from you or even if they don't have a property to sell or they don't want to sell, there's tons of things that they may do owner financing. They may say, hey, look, I, you actually know what you're talking about. Do you own a property management company? Would you be interested in taking this property? There's tons of things and avenues that you can begin, paths that you can begin to go down. But if, if you, again, if it starts with the fundamentals and having the vocabulary and being able to really understand the business to be able to, uh, to do this at a high level. Right. And, and I'll, I'll jump in and say this. It, I mean, what you're saying, essentially, you're hijacking this person's senses. You've got this investor or this person who's looking to buy or sell they're thinking about a million different things. So you're coming in with, you know, professional lingo, the right conversation. Um, once again, their ears perk up, you know, they're starting to listen to you. They see you as an expert. And like you said, they may not necessarily do something right now, but there's so, there's so much you can do with them. And this, is, this step is so important because if you nail this, you've got these guys on the hook for the next three to four years. Absolutely. And you know, on your team, I and say that term again, uh, because I think it's important for the viewers to, 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 to understand that term. You said you hijack their senses. Their senses yep. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, you're, hijack, yeah, you're hijacking their, their, their senses. And typically, the only way to hijack someone's senses is to really anticipate their needs in advance. Correct. For me, that's been the secret to, I mean, again, I'm not the greatest salesman, but, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I figured out quickly and early on, you know, if I want to be heard, I have to anticipate, you know, and, and, it, and that translates into me owning apartment buildings. Right. I have to anticipate my prospect tenants needs in advance. That's why I do my CO, the strategic evaluation of a target area is because I'm trying to identify who that prospect tenant is and then find a product or build a product around that profile. 
So, you know, yeah, man, if you, if you can't anticipate these individuals needs in advance, it's going to be extremely difficult. So yeah, you touched on something that's extremely important, Nate. All right. So that's step one, getting your lead generation tools. And again, we talked about the various different tools that are out there. So you're going to be simultaneously kind of working your sellers and your leaders. And a couple of questions that I've seen uh, that I've gotten is how long does it really take to saturate to get the phones ringing? Um, I mean, that's really how much hustle you put in, but you know, you need to be working. It usually takes with the direct mail and the social media and showing up to real estate investor club meetings. By the way, our next meeting for multifamily meetup is, uh, the 25th of this month. So you, you know, these are the areas and the places you want to get out to. Um, it usually takes three to six months, you know, uh, some three to nine months uh, to really start getting those phones ringing and start, you know, you know, uh, uh, being able to build this list and really understand your market and understand who are the major players in your particular markets uh, to really start uh, getting that, uh, that deal desk flow going. Mm. So hopefully that answers that question. Then step two, in the framework is now you're analyzing the deal and I'm, we're, on, we're on social media so they won't be able to see uh, you guys in, uh, in social media and Facebook Live won't be able to unfortunately right now see the, uh, the, anal the, the model that I have uh, built to analyze uh, apartment buildings to help me underwrite deals uh, fairly quickly. So, um, but as the phone calls come in, what are the next steps? The next steps are quickly going to be to, to evaluate these, these deals, um, you know, fairly quickly, Nate, um, you know, be able to master the ability to look at a project, you know, in, in a commercial, they, we call it BOE, back of the envelope, kind of an evaluation, you know, where someone is just like, you know, you know, quickly can, can determine whether or not a deal is a, is a deal. And that's kind of really what a wholesaler is going to do. They're going to do a back of an envelope and kind of figure out where the spreads are and typically how they do that, what formulas they're going to use they're going to use an evaluation called the cap rate because it's widely known, you know, amongst appraisers, owners, investors, brokers, pretty much in the entire community. Um, you're going to take and look at, you know, these particular properties, you try to get their P and L's, you know, for the most part, if you're really strong in the area, you've already can, can, you know, like in downtown St. Pete where I'm at, I already kind of knew going in what a P and L should look like and what it would cost to operate a certain property in a certain property size water, sewage, you know, your water and sewage bills, let's just say your utility, you know, um, what your tax, which is usually 80%, if not higher, you know, of your operating expenses, what your taxes were, um, you know, uh, you know what, what, what your labor costs are going to be, your management fees. So you kind of already know if you're already in an area, but you're able to quickly, you know, uh, evaluate a property. And typically you do that by the net operating income of the current property, uh, the current property's income. Uh, so the, the current net operating income that's in place, divide that by the market cap rate, and that can give you the idea of the, of the value of, of, of that particular property, uh, a snapshot. And then you want to know the stabilized value. So it's um, the stabilized net operating income divided by the market uh, cap rate, and that gives you the stabilized value of that asset. And then you're working your spreads between the two. So if you're looking to wholesale, then you're looking at, you know, your assignment fees in between the two. Quick example, if you have a property that's worth a million dollars, I'm using real small numbers because we all know I'm not great at numbers, but you, you find a property valued at a million dollars, unstabilized, um, it, it's worth, let's just say 500000 for simple math. It's an unstabilized project. Stabilized, you can get a, a million for it. You go in, you negotiate uh, 500000 you put a $50,000 assignment fee to it, you uh, now go out and, and, and work your buyer's list and try to sell that same property for 550000 and uh, with your assignment of fee attached to it. So now you're working the buyer, get them to sign a non-disclosure uh, or non-compete agreement. Now you send over the information. They like it. You, 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 you're going into your dual closing. Um, and of course, you know, the rest is, is, is kind of academic. But that is how you're quickly looking at these opportunities if you're just talking or looking at it from a wholesaling perspective. Of course, you don't really know what avenue you're going down until you get the seller on the phone and realize, you know, what, what their, what, you know, what, what, where their uh, motivation is. Um, but obviously, if it's just a wholesale, this is kind of the, the quick back of the envelope review you're going to do. Um, by this time, you know, if you've done one or two deals, you already probably have a virtual assistant making these calls and, and working the deal desk for you. Um, we can talk about that later, but this is a quick back of the envelope uh, you know, um, 
uh, uh, evaluation uh, of the subject property. And then from there, you're able to kind of determine what you need to do and how you need to uh, uh, present this uh, to your, to your uh, buyer's list. Does that make sense? Any, any questions on that or anything to, to, to add? Let's see. No, no, that makes perfect sense. Um, so with, about calculating net operating income and things of that nature, uh, why is it important to you to focus on NOI versus other types of income approaches? Good question. So NOI basically is all about uh, income. Uh, NOI is all about the, the income that the property produces. So it's think of it like the, like blood to the body. Okay. Um, you know, you, you clot the blood to the body and the body can, uh, if the clot reaches the heart, the body can end up dying. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's the same thing with an investment property. You're talking about income and cash flows, cash flows, bottleneck for whatever reason. Um, you know, the, the property ends up dying. It's called foreclosure. So, um, you know, NOI is, is the lifeline. So if you understand NOI and you understand and, and, and keep in mind, 99.9% .9 of net operating income is in fact rent, the source of rent. So if you understand, if you understand that, then, you know, if you've done your CIOTA process, you've read any of my books, you know, the CIOTA process, a part of it, a great deal of it is evaluating uh, uh, the net operating income. So you're evaluating where the rents and where do rents come from? They come from the prospect tenant or the tenant. So understanding who your prospect tenant is and understanding your market and the market that you're in is going to help you quickly be able to evaluate these deals. Like I, there's nothing that you can't send me that I quickly can't assess. So when people say, Oh man, I don't know about this wholesaling apartment stuff. You know, this is, this is difficult. I'm sure it is difficult to you. Because you know you you haven't taken the time to master the skill sets that are, are that are necessary to understand how to evaluate investment property, if that makes sense. So um, so that's that's extremely important that you you know you, you're developing these skill sets to understand NOI, and then where where more importantly, where does the NOI come from? How is it generated? So when you understand that, you're able to make these decisions fairly quickly, and you're also able to get the value fairly fairly quickly. Um, touch all the pain points of the seller. And then on the other side, on the flip side of the coin, on your, on your, on your, on your buyer's deal desk side, you're, you're able to quickly, uh, you know, come up with a, um, a plan of action to help your buyer uh, get into this deal. Of course, they're just really looking at cash flow, but at the end of the day, you know, because of your knowledge and your background, you're also able to probably bullet point to them a quick, um, you know, a quick, um, a, uh, business plan right uh, what i call a uh, a management plan you know i can kind of kind of really bullet point a management plan for the buyer so you know you, you know they may need it they may not you know for the most part depending on their their level of sophistication but still i mean it's an added bonus with working with us or working with chavis capital you're able to kind of really say okay look buyer i'm not only handing you a great deal that's cash flowing but here's five or six bullet points or five or six steps that you can enter into your, your, your management plan to, to realize these, uh, these uh, stabilization values, you know, from day one, you know, because remember they're buying the property at X and they're trying to get it to Y. So there's a period of stabilization, but if you can offer some tips to jump right on in Nathan, to help them with the stabilization process, that just makes you much more of a, um, you know, valuable asset to both, right. both individuals, both sides of the coin when you're talking to sellers and buyers. Make sense? Makes perfect sense. See, somebody got a question. Somebody said, most people do not understand the numbers, and this is true. And uh, if you know the numbers, you know the business. Somebody chimed in from, uh, absolutely, and that falls back right to, uh, you know, to um, understanding the vocabulary, getting yourself educated and trained, you know, and, and, and again, so most people don't, you know, they don't want to spend time with this. But you can see clearly how this pays off. You tell me, Nate, you know, I have a wife that has more degrees than the thermometer, <laughs> you know, and also a uh, debt that comes along with that. Yep. Um, school debt, you know, college loans. You show me what business you can make six to seven figures, you know, with just basically taking the time to read up and understand the vocabulary, you know, find a mentor, go to, you know, take a course like this. I don't care if you spend twenty thousand dollars for the course. If you're gonna turn around and make six figures, seven figures, you know, on one deal, what's the multiplier on that? You know, and nobody's standing over you, sending you any mail, or calling you on your phone, asking you for your student loan. 
Exactly. You know what I mean? Proceeds or, hey, look, you know, the, you know, reminding you of your balance of your student loan. This is something that, you know, allows you to get in the game right away. Minimal, minimal employee overhead. I mean, really virtually none. You know, you're utilizing, utilizing what you taught me, utilizing this, uh, the, um, the uh, what was that you taught me? The, um, the shared economy. Shared economy. There you go. Utilizing <laughs> the shared economy. Now you're, you're utilizing the shared economy. And, you know, you, you, you know, you got this, you know, that, that framework and those systems in place. Uh, yeah, man, there's, there's really no excuse for you not to be successful. Absolutely. And uh, maybe you can elaborate on what shared economy is for people that don't know. Like, I'm going to let you elaborate. You taught me. I'm not going to elaborate. I'll let yeah, you elaborate to the people about yeah, shared absolutely. economy. Absolutely. So, so shared economy is essentially uh, the Uber effect. You know, all the different sharing applications. Uh, there's, you know, kind of the gig economy. Uh, there are people that are working from the comfort of their home these days. They're industry experts, you know, people that are really, you know, solid in their field. And because we don't have to do the whole brick and mortar, um, you know, workplace anymore, um, we can offer our services for a reduced cost, you know, and um, 24 hours a day. So you have the ability to, you know, reach out to different experts, graphic designers, um, you know, legal professionals. Uh, you've got within the apartment industry, we've got maintenance, you know, mm -hmm. the whole time. Um, you know, anything that you could do for your property, pretty much you can find someone that works in the shared economy that you can, you know, with an application, uh, just push a button and then they're, they're working on your property. Brilliant. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. So, I mean, that, that was a game changer for me when I learned that the shared economy and what that was and applied that to my business in my model. Uh, that was a, that was a, a game changer for me. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, thanks for, for uh, defining that too, as well. Absolutely. All right. Then we're, uh, we're into what we call step three, really. I said step two here, but it's really step three. It's, you know, it's making the offer, um, getting in, getting your offer in, you know, putting up an LOI, a letter of intent, you know, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're uh, getting control of the asset from the seller. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, we talked about this, all these bullet points are already, you know, the, the keys to tying this deal up, getting the LOI out, showing proof of income, you know, there's a lot of things that you're going to have to do within this, this, this framework. But, you know, once you get the property tied up, you know, now you're working the deals, you're understanding, you know, how your scripts are helping you uh, tie up this deal and get to the letter of intent and get to a, to a possible uh, closing, you know, um, more so just as a recap, because I really feel like, you know, we talked on this or touched on this in the last slide. But again, if, if I can highlight anything, it's just making sure that you have the scripts learn how to master your scripts because the scripts are basically based on your ability to understand the vocabulary, understanding the numbers as somebody pointed out. Um, so, you know, having that, those scripts and that background and mastering your, your sales scripts is going to help you. It's going to be bumpy in the beginning. You'll, um, uh, you know, you may not have a quick rebuttal, but after you do this enough times, you know, and you get, you know, you're dealing with enough sellers and you're dealing with enough buyers you know, you're, 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 you know, you're, 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 you'll, you'll definitely break through and you'll be able to create these frameworks and be able to create solutions for both buyers and sellers, probably right on the phone, really showing your credibility, letting that shine through. So uh, what I probably didn't touch on, I'll touch on real quick in this section is like what tools are out there. I really love Reonomy. Um, You know, there's some other ones, but you know, Reonomy to me has, has been one of the leaders um, because their ability to be able to not only allow me to highlight certain sections and areas of value, but to be able to not only highlight those areas, but to, to pierce a lot of these corporate veils and get directly to the owners um, without having to go through a broker. Because obviously, if you're dealing with a commercial broker, they're never letting you get to the owner. Right. Uh, now you can get directly to the owner. So you're, you're basically business to business operations. Um, there's no third party. So your ability to quickly get to the owner allows your deal desk in your pipeline to quickly fill up. So, you know, quicker, the quickest, or the, you know, the quicker you can fill up your pipeline, obviously the quicker to your deal, uh, you know, a deal getting um, uh, uh, completed, um, you know, that, that time frame uh, obviously shortens. So you want to just make sure that, you know, you have those proper tools that are out there. And, and for me, the Reonomy has been the biggest game changer that I've seen. And there's tons out there. There's, there's other, um, uh, you know, there's other, uh, 
programs and software and platforms that are out there. Uh, but again, like I said, Reonomy has kind of mastered it all where it dumps it into a CRM for you. You're allowed to take notes. You know, there's just so many different dynamics that Reonomy has. And I'll make sure I post on Facebook and then we'll post at the end of this where they can find Reonomy. But uh, it just allows you, it allows you to get this pipeline opened up, you know, uh, fairly, uh, fairly quickly. You know what I mean? And get those deals flowing because that's, that's going to be key on both ends, buyer and seller. So uh, that kind of really, really, let's see, that kind of really sums up, um, at the end of the day, kind of really sums up the, the, the wholesaling side and what I've been working on. As you can see, I've, I've got a couple of misspells in here, but, um, well, actually I don't, I think that's a business. But uh, as far as the steps, this is really considered uh, step three and step four. Uh, I just haven't changed it in the in the in the because this is a, a actually a uh, a model that I'm currently working right. on um, a course model that I'm currently working on Nate. But uh, I think we pretty much covered it. You know, at the end of the day, if we, you know, again, if we were to highlight and go back and highlight, you know, it all starts with you know understanding you you know how you know understanding how where your lead generation is coming from. Uh, you know, you're going to be dealing with commercial you know brokers, how to speak to them how to speak to sellers, how to use direct mail, you know, how to speak, you know, in your direct mail pieces, how to develop your scripts, how to develop your social media presence, how to piggyback on other people's credibility, uh, if you have none yourself. So these are the things that are going to be really important. Um, you know, someone asked the question, you know, what, what do you feel about the current uh, state of the market right now? You know, for the most part, markets are markets. There's ability to make money in all markets if you're, if you're smart. So, you know, I won't, you know, I'm, that's a whole nother um, course or series or conversation, but uh, the opportunity to make money, uh, really, especially with multifamily, you know, you'd never obviously want to, to buy and, and be the one catching a dropping knife. Right. So, you know, when you know that uh, values are really high with lower cap rates right now, you have to be really conscientious, guys, where you're buying your investment property. That's why you see me stick to the core market, class A markets. Um, you know, and trying to find that C and transform that C property to a B property in those core markets. Um, you know, are you going to pay the premiums for those? Absolutely. But you, along with the premiums, you get some benefits. You get security um, from possible headwinds to come and fluctuations and changes. Um, you know, so, you know, for me, yeah, the core markets is, is key. You know, one of the, you know, no, one of the drawbacks I think I've seen in, in, in advertisement, my wife, told me, you know, uh, city of St. Pete was looking at the possibility of, uh, of, uh, you know, trying to stabilize the, the, the cost of businesses or doing business in downtown St. Pete, the rent's getting incredibly high out there. And then they were going to focus their attention on housing. Mm. You know, at the end of the day, is that really a, a headwind to come? Uh, I mean, it's something to keep your eye on, but really if they, if they want to solve the problem with me, uh, charging the rents that I'm charging, then they need to look at the property taxes that they're charging me. Because it's really a reflection on what I charge in rent is a direct reflection on what you're charging me in property taxes. At the, for the most part, considering that the property taxes are taking up 80% of my operating expenses, you know. So when you're if you're a government official and you're out here and you're running for this mayor's race that we're currently running, speaking to Facebook right now. So when you see me turn my head, I'm speaking to Facebook. But when you're looking at these individuals running for office, this is something that you gotta you gotta look at. So you know. A lot of people are talking about, hey, these prices are crazy. These prices are out of control. Well, if you don't want the prices to be out of control, then, then, then you know, city officials, let's not get too greedy on the property taxes side. So, um, you know, it, they go hand in hand. You, you charge me a higher uh, property tax, I got to charge higher rent. That's where I make my income. So um, I, I, I think, you know, it's quick to, to look at the owners of the buildings, uh, uh, the property owners and look at them as the bad guy. It's, it's so easy, right. you know, to, to get up and promise campaign uh, and make campaign promises. It's so easy to, to, to make us the bad guy. But like I said, let's, 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 if you want to have that conversation, let's have that conversation. Let's look at what, look at what you're charging me to do business in your city. So, you know, if you can help me on the property tax side, I'll be definitely willing to help you on the, uh, on the, on the rent side. So, that was just a little, a, a little, you know, a, a little tangent I wanted to go off on. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, yeah, man, this is, this is, you know, this is, 
this is where it's at, Nathan. This is this is a whole this is a business that I feel, you know, um people can take advantage of. You know, this wholesaling apartments is something that uh is something that individuals can really, you know, add into their current business. That's why I really love this and why I fell in love with it immediately and was like, I gotta develop a course. I gotta put this into my own business and then I gotta develop a course where I can help other individuals because at the end of the day, man, uh, you know, it, it's not costing you any more really than what we already, you know, the system that we already have in place, Nathan. We can add this to the fold of our current business, whether it be property management syndication business. I mean, this is, this is you know, for me, this is excellent. No, I, I agree 100%. I think what some people look at when they think about this wholesaling, you know, you were talking about difficult. Um, sometimes things that may seem difficult or hard, um, you know, maybe reframe that as important. You know, these are important steps. And mm -hmm. once you focus on getting the important steps down, you will find a lot more success in, in actually wholesaling these deals. Yeah, you got to put the work in. That's Absolutely. something that's really different. And, you know, I mean, we're probably preaching to the choir to most people. Correct. When you're talking about dealing with commercial and, and apartments, you have to, you, you know, it's, it's not like homes. This is where it differs to me. Um, some of the framework may look, you know, almost 90% almost the same. Uh, some may argue 95% the same. But the vocabulary, the ability to under, underwrite these deals fairly quickly, that's not the same. And you right. have to have a different type of vocabulary. You have to come to the table with some level of sophistication to be able to hold a conversation with both an owner or a seller and not get the phone hung up on, you know, and, you know, and that has to, and, you know, in order to, you know, of course, you know, we can create marketing pieces for you. We can do all your direct mail for you. I can give you all the templates, but I can't answer the phones for you. So when someone actually, you know, I can't sit and take meetings with potential buyers to, to put into your buyer pool, you know, I, I, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you're going to have to, uh, yeah, you have to put the work in. You have to put the exactly. work in. Exactly. No, um, and th thank you so much, Brian, for, for breaking this all down for us. I'm really looking forward to seeing the rest of this course. Uh, looking forward to getting into wholesaling some uh, you know, apartment complexes. And um, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Every week we put together information just like this. You're going to be able to find this course on brianchavis.com and also on the Landlord Academy. So make sure you stay up to date with us. Um, also join us on our Facebook page. And um, once again, Brian, thank you so much. Always a wealth of information and uh, look forward to chatting with you next week, man. Absolutely, Nate. I greatly appreciate it, man. We we'll look forward to next week. All right. Take care. All right, guys. Take care.